What is going on, wonderful people? It's Medicosis Perfect Shnanus, where medicine makes perfect sense. Welcome back to my pathology playlist. In previous videos, we talked about apoptosis and necrosis. We talked about hypoxia, the types of hypoxia, the organs most susceptible to hypoxia, and more. Then we talked about neoplasia and the basics of neoplasia. We talked about the paraneoplastic syndrome. We talked about the types of amyloidosis, cachexia, hamartoma, and choristoma. Today, we shall talk about a very important subject in pathology, which is granuloma. Is it a tumor? No, granuloma is not a tumor. Then why do we end it in oma? Because it's a mess. It's a mess of granular tissue. It looks like a spheriole. Click the like button, click the subscribe button, and let's get started. This is my pathology playlist. Please watch these videos in order for maximum understanding and retention. Remember that your blood in general is made of two things. It's made of plasma, which is the fluid part of the blood, and it's made of blood cells. The blood cells include red blood cells, white blood cells, and platelets. The white blood cells include basophils, neutrophils, eosinophils, monocytes, and lymphocytes. Basophils can change their name in the blood, we call them basophils. In the tissue, we call them mast cells. Monocytes are the same thing. In the blood, we call them monocytes. In the tissue, we call them macrophages or histiocytes. Today, in the granuloma, we will call them epithelioid cells or epithelioid histiocytes. In the liver, they change their name into Kupfer cells. In the nervous system, they become the microglia. And in the bones, what are the cells that eat your bone cells? Oh, these are osteoclasts. Osteoclasts with a C will cut down bone with a C, but osteoblasts with a B will build up bones. If you want to see more pathology videos in the future, please drop a brain emoji in the comments. I have a previous video titled Hypersensitivity Reactions when we talked about all of these in detail. We are in type 4 today, which is delayed. Hypersensitivity, which one's the fastest type 1, which one's the slowest type 4? Can you describe type 1 in few words? Sure. Immediate, anaphylactic, IgE, mast cells, they rupture, pew, they degranulate, pew, releasing histamine. And histamine can give you the symptoms of an anaphylactic shock. How about type 2? Psi 2 toxic. What do you mean? I mean, I have antibodies, okay? These antibodies are bound to antigens, okay? And this happens on the surface of the cell. The cell is the Psi 2. That's why type 2 is Psi 2 toxic. Okay, how about type 3? Three is free. You have antigens and antibody complexes. Same as two? Yeah, but with one difference. The big difference is this happens in the blood. And after this, since they are hanging around in the blood, the antigen antibody complex can end up being deposited in the blood, causing vasculitis, in your joints, causing arthritis, in your kidney, causing nephritis, etc, etc, etc. In type 1, type 2, type 3, we talked about antibodies like IgE, like the antibody that is cytotoxic, like the antibody that's freely floating in the blood. But type 4 has nothing to do with antibodies. Type 4 has nothing to do with the hemoral immune system. Type 4 is about T lymphocytes, cell-mediated immunity. No antibodies? Heck no. The T lymphocytes are super sophisticated. They communicate with each other via cytokines, which include the interleukins, which is the internet of the leukocytes. This is also the story of making a granuloma, and this takes time. Type 1, type 2, and type 3 hypersensitivity reactions were dealing with antibodies. We're dealing with hemoral immunity for the most part. But here, in type 4, we're talking about cell-mediated immunity for the most part. It's not antibodies, it's not B lymphocytes, it's not hemoral, it is cell-mediated. It is T lymphocytes. That's why it's delayed. Are you talking about CD4 T lymphocytes or CD8? It could be either. Oh, okay, tell me the story. Here is the antigen presenting cells, presenting the antigen to the T lymphocytes, specifically the CD4. The CD4 secrete interleukin 2. The interleukin is the internet of the leukocytes, 
This is how they communicate with each other. Now the CD4 positive is very active. It's gonna secrete interleukin-12. Also the macrophages secrete interleukin-12. Don't forget that the macrophages could act as an antigen presenting cell. The end result is interleukin-12 activating my Th1, T helper one. Is this the one that help the sister or the neighbor? It helps the sister. It helps other T lymphocytes. It does not help the humoral immunity, it helps the sisters, the cell-mediated immunity. It can also secrete interferon gamma to activate macrophages. If the organism is weak, destroy it by phagocytosis. But what if the organism is nasty and virulent and strong like tuberculosis? If I cannot kill it and eat it, let me at least surround it in a granuloma. The idea that the T helper 1 CD4 T lymphocytes secretes interferon gamma to activate the macrophage is one of the most commonly tested facts on any exam. Never ever forget this. Type 4, we're talking about cell mediated immunity. T lymphocytes, CD4 cells, especially the Th1, secrete interferon gamma to activate macrophages. Low virulence organism, phagocytosis, high virulence organism, make a granuloma, such as tuberculosis, histoplasmosis, blastomycosis, coccidioide mycosis, or sarcoidosis. In this case, the granuloma is not against a foreign invader. If you wish to download these doozy colorful notes, go to medicosisperfectionalis.com. I help you learn, understand, and pass exams. If you want me to personally tutor you, reach out to me on my website. Okay, Medicosis, how can we run circles and make a granuloma around the mycobacterium tuberculosis or the tubercle bacilli? Let's go! Let's go! Here are mycobacterium tuberculosis bacilli. We will surround them. With whom? With macrophages. Macrophages are here known as epithelioid histiocytes. Epithelioid because they look like epithelial cells. Histiocytes because they are in the tissue. They are not floating freely in the bloodstream. When they are floating freely in the bloodstream, they are called monocytes. But here they are stuck in tissues. Histiocytes. Don't forget, who activated the macrophages? T helper 1, are they CD4 or CD8? CD4. T lymphocytes or B lymphocytes? T lymphocytes. They will also come to run circles around tuberculosis. Something weird will start to happen. Many of these macrophages will join forces combined together to make this humongous multinucleated giant cell so we have the stupid TB here, and then we have our own macrophages called epithelioid cells or epithelioid histiocytes. Then we have the CD4 T lymphocytes. And don't forget, some of the macrophages will change into multinucleated giant cells. Is this an acute destruction? No, the whole purpose of the granuloma is that I could not destroy the bacteria acutely. Therefore, this is a chronic thing, which means you will need plasma cells. Okay, they can come too. More importantly, fibroblasts will come. What do fibroblasts do? They lay down some butimus fibrous tissue like this. Oh, okay so that you can surround the tuberculosis. You can imprison the TB inside this doozy granuloma. As long as your immune system remains strong, the TB will be in prison for life. The moment your immunity drops, you're in trouble. Hashtag TB reactivation. That's why TB reactivation is common in the elderly, in the immunocompromised, in HIV patients, in patients with uncontrolled chronic diabetes, in patients taking chemotherapy, in patients receiving organ transplants, in patients taking immunosuppressive drugs such as the biologics, etanercept, adalimumab, infleximab, etc. And then what's gonna happen? Oh, let's cause some necrosis. Okay, cell death then. Yeah, let's kill some of those cells. All right, that's some necrosis for you. Okay, what kind of necrosis? Is it coagulative necrosis? Nope, this is caseating necrosis. I know it might sound cheesy, but that's because it is. Caseating means like cheese. When you see caseating granuloma like this, you know that there was probably an organism there. Could be tuberculosis, histoplasmosis, blastomycosis, coccidioidomycosis. But that's not true with sarcoidosis. There is no organism in the middle in sarcoidosis. Sarcoidosis is your body attacking itself. Who else is gonna explain to you like this? Your woke professor with his PowerPoint? No. 
Give me examples of caseating granuloma with caseous cheesy necrosis in the center, tuberculosis, histoplasmosis, blastomycosis, coccidioidomycosis. Basically, anything else is going to be non-caseating granuloma. It's time for clinical examples. Type 4, T lymphocytes. T lymphocytes, tuberculin skin test. This is for tuberculosis, the granuloma. It's for transplant rejection, such as acute rejection, chronic rejection, but not the hyperacute organ transplant rejection. Touching, what do you mean? Contact dermatitis. This is the story of poison ivy. This is the story of wearing a new nickel watch on your wrist and developing a rash on the same wrist and the rash looks exactly like a watch. This is the story of trying new makeup and three days later you developed a reaction exactly where you applied the makeup. This is also the story of graft versus host disease. Did you know that active tuberculosis is a contraindication to breastfeeding? If you want to learn more about mastitis, breast abscess, chorioamnionitis, endometritis, cervicitis, pelvic inflammatory disease, download my OBGYN high yields course at medicosisperfectionalist.com. There are more than 600 premium videos available on this channel. When you click the join button and choose the highest tier, please subscribe, hit the bell, smash like, support my channel on Patreon, PayPal, or Venmo, go to my website to download my courses, notes, and cases, or if you would like me to personally tutor you. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionandus, where medicine, chemistry, math, and physics make perfect sense.